not sure who's knocking on my door. And uh, it's some SEAL Team 3 guys, Darren Isham, who I knew, and uh, his brother was a team dude. And they come rolling up in Mom's garage, and they got this dude with them. And a bunch of other dudes, like a whole fucking platoon that's uh, you know on probation and shit, and they're out there to get some gear. So they've, they've passed buds, they've been fucking put in a platoon, and uh, here's these, these dudes that I always looked up to, these SEALs. And they got a bunch of other fucking polylogs with them. And uh, ben, Ben's like, he tells the story now, and I guess it kind of was. He's like, man, it was like a fucking back alley drug deal. Like, we, we're going up this street, and we knock on the door, and the door opens up, and we let them in, and fucking there's all these sewing machines, and we're building gear. So we built a bunch of gear for them. And uh, I saw Ben a couple more times, and, you know, I knew Isham and stuff, and I was doing stuff. Isham was friends with Scully, who was later NCOIC Scout Sniper School. Now he is the production, you know, he's the fucking full-time manager for Strider Knives, which some of you guys, you've all heard of Strider Knives. So uh, I lose contact with Ben. I don't, like, I know who Ben is. I'm hearing fucking Mookie stories and shit, but, like, I hadn't seen Ben in a long time. So I move out here, and I'm doing shit with Jaeger, and this motherfucker shows up. And he's like, are you? John Willis? Yeah, I know fucking John Willis. When you met James in Iraq, he had yeah. all of our shit on. Um, I, l let me interrupt you. Yeah, go. Um, I'm in Iraq, and all the gear fucking sucks. It was 2004, and everyone in the world needed tactical gear. Fucking nylon was scarce. You couldn't get it. And I'm sitting there bitching, as I, I do. I'm like, there used to be this fucking dude in San Diego uh, working out of his mom's garage. I'm pretty sure the cops were looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was in uh, my SEAL platoon, uh, a senior SEAL said, Hey, man, we're going to go to this dude's house. You're going to hand him 200 fucking bucks, and he's going to make gear for you. And at that, you know, at that stage it, in a SEAL platoon, you're new. You just shut up and do exactly what you're told. None of it makes sense. Yeah, and 200 bucks was like all my money. And he was, he was you know... It's not like he made me feel good about spending his life. <laughs> and uh, so, so anyway, this gear comes. And it used to all be olive green, fucking olive drab with black trim. And I'm laying on my cot in Iraq. I'm like, this. it was like an eagle or something. I was like, fuck this. Dude. There used to be this criminal ass dude who made <laughs> incredible gear. And I'm describing it. And James was, at the time, the world's biggest gear queer. He instantly goes... John Willis. I didn't actually recognize the name at the time. He goes, no, no. And, and I said, black trim. He goes, let me t and let me tell you what what happened to him. And and I believe you were on a federal vacation at the time. <coughs> I was I was taking college classes. <laughs> um, I had some Cal Poly instructors. So um, I didn't actually re meet you. Yeah, I physically met you here, but you had just came out of your vacation. Yep. And uh, I called you up. I, I heard you got out, and we're chit chatting. And man, I'm like, you know, I wish you the best. I'm I'm glad you find because uh, you, you're my boy. And uh, I was going to Afghanistan, and this is immediately following my trip to Iraq and Najaf, where you saw the video on the roof on that trip. And in that uh, couple months of firefight, daily firefights, I routinely ran out of ammunition. What I mean is I, I had to put mags in my pockets because my stupid ass uh, safari, uh, whoever made that piece of shit, Blackhawk. That's what it was, a bullshit. Anyway, I needed 12 fucking magazines. So I had my cargo pants and I'm running, my little fat legs are moving and, and magazines are falling out. So I'm on the phone with them and I say, man, I'm going to Afghanistan. Could you make me a rig? He's like, I got enough nylon to make one rig for you. Just describe it to me. I go, 12 fucking magazines, 12 magazines, two smoke, and two frags. And uh, the frags are unique, uh, pouches for the fragmentation hand grenades. You are trained in the military that you open the pouch, you put the grenade in, and close it. That everywhere you go, that's how it's done. Well, the first time I ever threw a hand grenade for real, I was on my stomach, well, getting it out, I, I got up to throw it. Um, if, if you ever think you're going to throw a hand grenade from the prone, uh, take a baseball, lay on your chest, throw it, and you'll wish you'd never thrown that fucking grenade because it goes six feet. Um, <laughs> but I'm getting the grenade out, and my chest rig's down sitting on the fucking flap. You follow me? The flap goes up. So I'm now doing this to get this fucking grenade out. 
Don't worry about it. Okay. Mongo so, will clean it up later. <laughs> so I, I get the, hey man, it's good to see you little boy, you growing up. Um, so I, I'm going to get this fucking grenade. I'm about to get shot because the, the, the shelf that, or the wall is not a, we're on the roof and it, it plays it's only two feet high. So now my, my head's exposed one fat ass is trying to get this grenade out. So what's unique about it is I had him put the grenade pouches upside down. So the grenade falls into your hand when you need it. You know, you like undo it and it just comes out this way instead of up and into your shit. Now, I would wear that thing on the base, and nobody says shit to us when we're on base because they don't know who you are, what you're doing, and it's obvious they can't fuck with you. But the army dudes would flip the... You could yeah. see it in their heads. Yeah. He has fucking grenades upside down. They fucking flip out, but it's actually a... Yeah. a there was a whole thread on Light Fighter of dudes talking shit about how unsafe it was to have grenades upside down. You might open it when your hands are wet and it rolls out. Well, you don't have the fucking pin out of it, dipshit. Yeah. But the deal was, Mookie called me. I had just gotten home. I was at a mall. And Mookie calls me at 9 o'clock and goes, Hey, I need this rig. I need it in like six days. And it has to have A, B, C, and X, Y, Z on it. So I call him. I get home at 1 in the morning. And I call him up. We talk for about an hour. And I made the first rig that night and the next morning. And um, the rig came out, and I'm like, Ben, you can't wear this fucking rig. You want so much shit on this rig. The rig is 36 inches wide and like 24 inches tall. I'm like, there's no fucking way that you, you got to lose some of this shit. He's like, bullshit, fucking do it. I know you can do it. So we started fucking around with it, and the only way to get it to work, traditionally, all the mag pouches sit low, and your smoke sit on the side. But we had medical over here. We had radio over here. We had all kinds of shit on the rig. So there was nowhere to put the smoke. So we bumped the mags up and put the smokes underneath and then the frags. Now the real Mookie War Rig had frags and smokes. The ones we sold to civilians only had smokes on them. And we made, there's maybe a hundred real Mookie War Rigs. The final rig was 30 inches wide and about 17 inches tall. So we made about a hundred of those. There's a hundred of them floating around. When we see them go up for sale, which is very rare. They almost always go to Japan nowadays when they are auctioned off. We see them go for $2,500. And we, like, we built a few of these rigs. There's a few of them you know, in use. Nowadays, we've got the NSW chest rig, which does almost the same thing. It's just layered because we were able to put the mags inside. So fast forward, and Ben will have a lot more to add in between all this, I'm sure, but in history, fast forward to the movie Hurt Locker. Ben's home now. And he's hanging out here in Camden some, and, you know, we're doing some shit. I'm still in San Diego. And he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in L.A. Come to L.A. We're flying. We're, we're all flying into L.A., and we're going to meet with Jeremy Renner and Ray Fiennes and a bunch of these actors. So we roll up to L.A., and all these dudes are there. And all these guys are sitting in there. They're doing briefings like Chris Barrett's there talking about the 50 cal rifles and um, the Dog Brothers. That was probably the coolest fucking, like, if you don't know who the dog brother, Ben got the fucking dog brother guys to come. Mark Denny. There's some dudes that are meeting in parks. It's the real life fight club. Like, fight club was based on these dudes. There's there's Nat Geo documentaries. There's uh, Discovery Channel. Some dudes meet in the park and beat the fucking living shit out of each other with whatever weapon you choose. And it became this whole underground fight scene. I'm watching these motherfuckers. I'm just sitting here staring at these dudes that I'd seen on TV. Ben got these dudes in there just talking about fighting Mindship and Warrior Mindship and stuff. And uh, afterwards, we're in the hallway. Ben's like, hey, come talk to these actors about the gear and shit. And Renner's out there. And he's like, hey, you ride dirt bikes? I'm like, yeah. He's like, can I come down to your house and ride some fucking dirt bikes? Like, if I bring my brother down there. I'm like, yeah, we can fucking ride dirt. Like, they were cool. They were just normal fucking people. Like, they didn't give a shit about the Hollywood stuff. That dude checked himself out of his contract to come off of insurance and paid for training from TAC Response because guys were giving him shit in one of his last movies about his weapons handling skill. And if he was going to portray a U.S. serviceman, he didn't want to make them look bad. So he got training on his own. And that's and so. So, anyways, they're, they're, we're doing these rigs. We do a, a Mookie War Light, which is just eight mags, has a place for a tear off med pouch and some smokes on it. We're doing a baby version that's more modular at a lower price point than the Mookie War Rig for the movie Hurt Locker. And if you look at the cover of Hurt Locker, our gear's all over it. You can see all of our, our red panels on our tear off med pouch and stuff. So, we make these eight mag rigs. 
they're putting them on film, they're filming, and Ben calls me up. He's like, "Dude, these rigs are making the actors look fat. We need we need a, a skinnier rig." So we shit out some four mag rigs, and some of the dealers and some guys in Japan and Italy get a hold of these photos. I don't even know where they got the photos from. Like the movie hadn't even nobody even knew about the movie yet, really, and they found out about these rigs. So we start making, we make the 8 mag rig, which we're selling a little bit. We make a 4 mag rig now because it was making the actors look fat. We were never going to sell them. I'm like, man, these things will never sell. Dudes started buying them because of the movie. And then we made a modular version. We still make all three of those rigs to this day. That was 10 years ago almost. Yes. So I moved here to Camden six years ago. And uh, the day I roll into town, Ben's here. It was alumni weekend. Yep. And, um... Here we are again, fucking hanging out. Ben's, you know, in and out a little bit. And uh, I moved here to work in this one room. And we now have about 6,000 square feet. I've got a 1,600 square foot um, on the back that's all storage where we keep... It, it was originally just a garage to keep the razors and the four-wheelers and shit, but it's been taken over half of its mil as uh, webbing and supplies. And then when TAC Response moved out, we took that building down there, and that's manufacturing. And then we got the old haunted house on the hill up here. That's all storage and webbing and shit. The snake trailer out here is full of snakes and lizards and shit, and several rooms in there are now webbing in materials. So we have just bought um, a 10,000 square foot building on 10 acres of property. We just added 6,000 square feet upstairs, so we've got a loft up there, and we'll be manufacturing there in addition to here. I don't know how long we will stay here, but we'll be here at least a year still. So when we, we're buying additional equipment, setting up additional lines, we're taking some ladies from here to train new bodies, and then still keep this up and running so it's somewhat seamless when it changes over. But, um, talk. I know you got some We got time. a new product coming out. Um, I have a nephew who's Jewish. Um, the, love yeah. him to death. The Mookie War Yamaka. For all your little Jewish friends, um, we're going to do it in Cryptech, all kinds of shit. Um, here's the rule you can't order it and say what material you want it in, you get what you get. Shut the fuck up. That's what's coming. Okay? How about we just right. agree on that right now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. color we feel like making. If you get a pink yarmulke, wear your pink yarmulke. Uh, oh, by the way, happy Hanukkah, motherfuckers. Yeah, that was good. It started yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, do you have any questions that you were lingering on your mind? Yeah, so how did you like running the rig when you were, uh, was it in Afghanistan? It was in Afghanistan, and. Uh, as you, you were talking, it reminded me, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, on that contract, I was mostly working out of a Pajero, which is like a little fucking terrible pickup truck overseas. So uh, if you ever think, if you were thinking, well, I can think of smarter ways to carry 12 magazines. If you're in a fucking truck for eight hours, the only way you can carry 12 mags is on your chest. Because what you actually do is you lift up the, when you hop down, you lift up, you pull your body armor out just a little bit, and I carried... Uh, Socks with sand in them, like you know, like a sniper would for shooting. I would sit it right there in my thigh, rest the armor plate, because that shit will 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 fuck you up over time. Set that on the sand, which displaces all the weight, and then I sit the mags on top of the armor, and I'm fucking relaxed. Also, you have to take one of those sand bags, like a, a, a big sock, and put it in the small of your back lumbar, and set your back plate on that. So it takes that weight off. Because if you sit in a car for six, eight hours a day bouncing with 30 pounds, all of you. I just had spine surgery two months, three months ago oh, over the totality of my lifestyle. Um, How did you come up with 12 bags? Because I really didn't think I could pull he, off 20. Because he couldn't carry 20. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't carry 20. That's actually, a, that is the true answer, as cheeky as it is. 12 was as reasonable, 3, 3, 3, and 3. That was as, as legit as we were going to get. Um, one of the instructors today said, uh, uh, you'll never hear anyone say, too bad I, 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 I had all that ammo in the fire. And it's 100% true. Um, if you're ever thinking about ammo, this goes basic. Uh, excess is best. More ammo, more better. If you see any pictures of James's vehicles in Iraq, which were my vehicles in Iraq, um, I had all my shit on me. That was that was my shit. And then I stuffed magazines, grenades, shotgun. Like I'd get a little shotgun and cut it up like this and put it in a. I had I I was like the fucking Easter Bunny of death, man. Um, <laughs> because when you need it, you need a lot of it. You know what I mean? And you in what you 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 get all fucked up thinking in your mind about the bullshit end of work because 
most of work as a soldier, a cop, or whatever, a dude with a gun is bullshit. You're carrying it. It sucks. And you start finding yourself modifying things for comfort and all these, all these other decisions uh, that are just fucking wrong. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Student of the Gun Homeroom. Make sure that you're listening to the radio show each and every week, watching the TV show, and that you download the mobile app. Hey, it's free, right? You can get it at the Google Play Store or your iTunes Store. And please, leave your comments below.